And so we do our work of submitting to God and being transformed within us so that we take that to others after we've done our work. And so it becomes kind of contagious, almost, almost like um, anxiety. Only it's not anxiety, it's joy. Does that make sense? We talked about reframing. This is from Dean Ornish, Dr. Dean Ornish. After we reframe those mental maps, and we've gone through that process, Dean Ornish says radical, sweeping, comprehensive changes are often easier than small, incremental ones. Giving people multifaceted support is vital to change. It's helping them love what they hated, accomplishing something, and finding joy in it. I'll give you a great example. Seminary students, when they first show up for clinical pastoral education, really don't want to go into a stranger's room and engage in an intimate conversation. This is something we would rather not do. Am I right? But helping them love what they hated is giving opportunities for growing confident competence for, for growing um, your own skill so that you actually begin to see I can do this and I can do it well and not only that but it seems like the spirit shows up and does something I hadn't even planned for that's helping them love what they hated multifaceted support Changing personal abilities enables people to do what they thought they could not do. Increasing opportunities to improve by several complex methods enables personal ability to grow, skill building, confronting issues, taking responsibility, and practice. Enabling social motivation moves from encouragement to engagement that enables transforming behaviors. It's like taking the hand of a person who's never learned how to walk. Some of you are parents, you have children, you knew what it was like when your child was trying to walk and taking the baby steps and would stumble and fall, what did you do? You took the hand, you held them up, you kept encouraging them, you kept giving them opportunities, you kept saying, you can do it, you can do it. There was so much compassion there. There was so much love. And what they saw in your eyes told them they could do it. Well, we do that also, first with ourselves and then with others, as spiritual leaders. Those are some of our roles. Social ability, the process of providing assistance when one cannot succeed alone. By providing social capital and empowerment, one's ability is increased. Social capital. I don't know how to do this thing. I don't know how to provide for somebody's needs. Well, what do we do here? We get in a group, and we talk about it, and we go out as a group, and we, sh we shadow, and we see how this is done, and we come back. That's social capital. The encouragement is, you can do this, and there's subtle expectation that we expect you to do it. And you can. And we're going to be so proud of you when you do. That's social capital. Then there's structural motivation. Structural motivation removes structural disincentives and uses incentives linked to vital behavior. 
study the behaviors that need to change. Limit your scope of influence to only a couple of vital behaviors for undifferentiated people. So don't give people 20 behaviors and say, this is what needs to be changed. Let's, let's do two or three with lots of encouragement and lots of opportunity and lots of modeling. This is structural motivation. But also structural motivation is something like, well, do I have access? Uh, what's the building like? Will I be able to do this physically? Is there an encouragement to have a relationship? Um, is it, am I encouraged to be able to go back home and, and be in dialogue if no one is available? Am I encouraged to be in dialogue with, uh, say, within a department? Um, am I encouraged to be in dialogue with others if um, that person's office door is always closed? I mean, look at physical structure. How does that help us in relational connection also? Grinny dealt with uh, this as well. Other doors are watch for behaviors that might need to break free of culture that sustains past problems. Structural ability improves personal mastery through practice and assistance from others. And we talked about examining non-human forces like building designs, and space, and sight, sound. All of these. I would like to um, ask you to do a quick exercise for about five minutes. We're going to pause here and talk. We're bringing Bowen theory back in. And we're going to pause and talk about, for five minutes, if you will break up in groups of two or three, and talk about what makes you anxious, why. Does that make you anxious? And when you get to that, why does that make you anxious? And when you get to that answer, why does that make you anxious? You understand the instruction? We're going down three times to the why. We're getting closer to the core. And do you see any options? So if you will, break up into groups of two to three, 